Welcome to The Rock. We hope what you watch today inspires you. And we'd love to hear your questions and comments via Twitter at The Rock of York. You can also find us on Facebook or contact us through the website at www.rockofyork.co.uk. In the meantime, let's crack on. Good evening, everyone. Um, it's uh, lovely to see you all here tonight. I have been working on something all week, and then I've set my alarm early this morning. I think I'll just read through it. Woke up, I thought, I don't want to say that anymore. So um, I've prepared something fresh today that I know I need to revisit, and I know it's not just for me. So I've called it Speak Life Revisited, and I remembered this morning a message that Anth bought in November last year that was called Speak Life. I know that um, some of you will remember it. I know that Urban Live, you did a whole thing around it, didn't you? Because it had your big quote on your head. And I'm going to revisit that tonight because I felt it was important to do. Because around that time that Ant delivered that message, it might have even been the same week, someone spoke some words to me, you know, one that you know, unless you do know him, but he's, he's in a different context, um, that I found so challenging. And since then, those words have been a voice in my head. Have any of you ever had someone <laughs> who becomes a voice in your head? And sometimes I don't catch on quick. And this morning, I finally made the connection between them saying this to me in November, hearing this message on speaking life, and I haven't really been joining the dots. Because what I've probably done since since that time, is let these words settle in my mind and shape my way of life. So I needed to revisit that, that message this morning, and I listened to it again this morning, and so I want to recap a little bit and then add to it, reinforce it, um, and hopefully you will benefit from it as well. Now, um, I'm going to use a significant amount of what Ant said up front. So I'm plagiarizing, but that's okay. He'll let me. Um, and he started by talking about how we all know how powerful words can be. We all know that. You could sit there and give me numerous examples of things that have been said to you, positively and negatively, that have shaped who you have become to this day. And that words spoken then are shaping who we are now. We all know that. And they're not these words. He talked about how these words are not confined to space and time. They have a life of their own, and, and they produce life. And we all know how those negative and positive experiences from the past can stay with us for decades and, and be reshaping things all the time. Now, I can think, and I, use, I don't use this word lightly, I can think of words from much earlier in my life that I would say have haunted me. When I was about 21 years old, I was told that I would be punished for a choice I'd made by my then church leaders somewhere else. And that, for years, dominated my striving to be a wonderful um, person um, for the kingdom. And that was my driving force, those words that were spoken. Now, there was reasons why it was said in all the context, and that's all right, but that happens, doesn't it? Now, we seem to, the other thing that I thought at the time was that, why is it that we, 10 people can say something wonderful about you, you get one critic. What do you go home chewing on? You go home chewing on that one thing, that one thing that challenged what you wanted to believe about yourself. And, and we tend to hear the negatives louder than we hear the positives. I don't know what that's all about. It's a shame, that, isn't it? And we hopefully can undo a little bit of that tonight. Um, now, to what extent do words hold power, hugely, and that creative power of words? And to what extent can we start to speak life to the extent that um, it can create something very tangible and very touchable? And how far will that go? One of the things he talked about was, can we somehow harness words to create not only a change, but a miracle? Could we be, in our time, in our generation, able to speak life to the point where we see the miraculous, something out of nothing. That excites me. In the beginning, God said. God said. He said it. Let there be light, and there was light. Jesus also said to his disciples, the words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. They are in themselves, those things. And if 
And now we've talked about the time, how um, that's the same of us. We need breath, that ruach that did the same thing, to speak our words. So in speaking our words, there's great power. And think of just how much of our existence, our, your, our existence is driven by what we're creating all the time with our words. It's absolutely huge. So we've got to choose our words carefully. Not only words that we speak, but I find the worst words I say are the words I say to myself. I have an inner critic. Does anybody else have an inner critic? I have someone on the, I have words on the inside of me. Everyone else will be like, Jen, that was great. And I'm like, no, it's not. No, it's awful. I suck. Um, no one's... They're not words that are being, they're, they're inside words, but those words equally are creating a narrative on the inside of me that I then work out. We write things on Facebook and social media and text messages and Instagram and whatever you use. And they're all words that create something. Now, one of the things that Anth proposed is he said, everything that will ever be made that matters in your life will be made through words. That's huge. Huge. The other thing that he said was, Jesus is what God is saying. So when we look at, he was the word, wasn't he? The word made flesh. And how many times have we been told, oh, Jesus says this, and you're thinking, does he? That doesn't seem to be what, he, what God's saying when I look at Jesus. Now, what I bring to the table is the decisions that I make about which of those words I'm going to believe in my life. So I've got this narrative over here, I've got this narrative over here. One of them is going to be the one that I believe and form an attachment to and walk out. And nobody other than me can really decide which of the words are going to be um, the ones that I make the driving force of my life. Am I going to believe, are we going to believe the good words that the Father has spoken over humanity? Are we going to believe those? Now, last week we heard about some incredibly good news. And we are going to continually bang the drum of a more beautiful gospel because that is what we believe. Because we have an incredible covenant, an unbreakable promise of which you and I are the beneficiaries, not the creators. Um, and those creative words within that covenant are always going to bring life and blessing, wholeness, health, wisdom, and understanding. Now, within this covenant, I don't think the, the language used is of condemnation, ever. I don't think it's of judgment. I don't think it's of shame. I don't think it's of despair. I don't think it's of pain and confusion. I think it's always words that are speaking life. But how often do we confess those other things? We confess that there's no hope, there's no resolution, this problem's too big, it can't be fixed. But yet, in the language of God, there is always room for restoration, Always, always. And yet what comes out of our mouth can be the opposite. Now this morning, all I kept thinking in my mind is that I've spoken myself into a corner. And that's not the expression. Does anyone know what the expression is? You've painted yourself into a corner. Can you put up that picture for me, Robert? Um, there's an expression that means you've painted yourself into a corner. Which basically means, as you can see, that you've actually put yourself in a situation where you've now got a problem. It's like, well, how can I get out of this? I can't really maneuver way, my way out of it. It felt fine while you were painting because there was plenty of space to work with. But then all of a sudden you're like, oh, whoops, I haven't thought this through and now I'm over here. And I knew today that I thought, um, I've spoken myself into a corner. And some of you are where you are feeling like in a confined space because you've been speaking yourself into a corner. And now you're like, oh, I don't really know how to get out of this. And that's what we're going to look at tonight. And because there is a way out of that corner if we will listen. Now, I believe totally that the creator speaks through wonderfully through his creation. Do you? I think he really does. Psalm 19 says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. If you pop up the next slide, Robert. I thought about this. 
We are sitting here in York, but we are also suspended in space. That's amazing. So that's amazing, isn't it? Now, it totally makes sense to me that creation will speak, the creator will speak through his creation. Um, and I want to show you a short video. It's a little bit weird. <laughs> it's only three minutes. It's a little bit weird, but I, I found it today, and it is absolutely fascinating. It explores the work of a guy called Masaru Imu Imoto. I think he's Japanese. Now, he conducted experiments where he took water from particular um, water sources like rivers, streams, and lakes, and they experimented on the water. And he looked, he could do this thing where he froze it, and, he, and then he looked at what the crystals did within the water. Now, he would put the water in jars, and then he would speak positive words, label some of them positively and some of them negatively, and he'd speak to some jars positive words, and he'd speak to some jars of water, negative words. And he proposed that the structure of the water changed based on whether positive or negative words were spoken. Now, he studied this for years. He, he proposes he's got evidence for this. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that some people think it's nonsense. Um, they couldn't. Some scientists say, you can't prove it. Your experiment is flawed. So I'm not giving it to you as scientific fact. I am giving it to you as possible fact. And also, because it's really interesting in what we're talking about tonight, and I want it to symbolize for you and make memorable for you um, if something like this is possibly true. And they've also think that water has memory. Have you heard that? Apparently water has memory. Now, if something in nature can be moved and shaped by things around it, I certainly think we can. So I want you to watch it and don't worry about whether it's true or not. That's not really the point. It's just fascinating what he found. So over the three minutes, you will see um, the crystals, and next to the crystal will be the words that were spoken over those crystals. And then you'll see in the images, it's a little bit weird, but you don't mind, do you? You don't mind a bit weird? So um, let's have a watch.
Am I still... Sw ah. I just think that was interesting. I don't mind if it's true or not. I think it's just really interesting. Um, now, think about... Um, if you can put the next slide on for me, Robert. Just think about the different areas of your life and the different things in your life that you are saying, I love you, to, or I hate you to some areas of your life. And this guy just sort of tracked over... I mean, <laughs> some people have got a lot of time on their hands, haven't they, to do this? Um, apparently, when people tried it at home, it didn't have the same impact. I'd still like to give it a go. I'm going to try it. When you see jars, you know, <laughs> he's shaking his head now. Um, I just think it's really interesting. Now, if you think of it as symbolising your life, we are constantly doing this with different areas of our life. There's things that we will speak positively and we will love and we will nurture and we will invest. And then there's these other things. Like I was talking about in my situation earlier, that you're chewing over and you're talking to yourself about and it's in your head and camp there. And we're all the time talking dislike to those things. Now, we don't tend to call it hate. We call it concern or we say, this is bothering me, or we soften it enough to believe that it's actually just are all right. But really, that's what we're doing. We're projecting onto something that it's something very not helpful. Um, so what might your internal experience be telling you about the shape of your confession at the minute in life? When you looked at those um, cr beautiful crystals, I liked that the Amazing Grace one was absolutely gorgeous, wasn't it? Um, are you feeling internally that what's coming out of your life is this lovely shape of gratitude? Have you ever met a grateful person? Aren't grateful person people just energising to be around? We have this uh, phrase at work where we talk about that you have your radiators and your drainers. And we go into schools and we talk to school leaders and say, are oh, you radiating purpose? and vision, and energizing your team, or are you draining the life out of them with all the challenges and demands and tasks you're putting on them? And I wonder whether in life you feel you're radiating something, or whether you just feel utterly, utterly drained. Might the words that we speak be able to speak us out of the corner in the same way that the words we spoke put us in the corner? Is that a possibility? Now, Romans 8 says... What shall we say to these things? What are your these things? What's in the jar? What shall we say to these things? It's sort of interesting that it says, what shall we say to these things? Not what shall we do about these things, but what shall we say to these things? It starts there. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who has given his son in glorious covenant, won't he freely give us all things? Then it talks about who are we to bring a charge, an accusation against another or to condemn them. Saying so who, who are we to use our words to bring a charge or accusation or condemn someone else? Who are we to do that? Who shall separate us from his love? And then he lists a bunch of things that covers pretty much everything that's possible and says nothing. None of these things are going to separate us. And then this was the bit that I really loved today. Yet in all these things... We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That wouldn't be a bad thing to confess every day, would it? As we start to speak life. Um, can you just pop up the next slide for me, Robert? No, the one after that, sorry. This one, I am not a conqueror. Don't call me a conqueror. I'm not a conqueror because I'm more than a conqueror. So, I just thought it was a little bit cheesy. But when I thought about it, um, <laughs> it does say more than a conqueror. And I was thinking, why use... And it does say that in the original, more than a conqueror, because more than means you gain a surpassing victory. It's not like, oh, I've conquered, I've barely survived <laughs> by the skin of my teeth, but I've made it. More than a conqueror means you get a surpassing victory. You vanquish beyond. It's a decisive victory. It's not about just surviving and being the conqueror. It's about the fact that, my goodness me, I've got so far past this in life that I'm absolutely thriving. 
which I thought, that is better than just conqueror. I want to be a more than person. Now, can you hear tonight another voice beyond the voice that's left you in your corner to start to talk you out of that place and to start to speak life? And can we step out of those places to a surpassing victory over that which has imprisoned us? Because you can know we can stay where we are and we're still going to be loved where we are, but we're not going to experience liberation. We're still going to be in our own internal prison with our own critical voices in our mind, not able to surpass. There's the great song, and we're going to sing it in a few minutes, louder than the voice that whispers, you're unworthy. Louder than that inner critic's voice. Louder than the voice that might have spoken that to you last year, last week, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, however many years you want to go back because that voice is a lie because the covenant that we've got doesn't say you're unworthy it says actually the opposite it says the investment into you is endless and unbreakable because it's based on what he did not on what you're ever going to do so that's a lie it's also louder than the voice that is in our minds telling us that that person over there is unworthy that somehow or other you're just a problem in my life I've, if I could just get rid of you as my problem, everything would be all right. It's also louder than that voice as well. And as we sing this song tonight, it, it talks about you can come as you are. Um, with all your, all, whatever state you're in, you can come as you are. And I want you to sing it for yourself, but I also want you to sing it for, this is going to sound odd, but I want you to sing it for the person whose voice is the voice in your head that is the biggest critic that says, you can come as you are. Even though your voice is, you can come as you are and, and free them to do that and forgive them to do that and believe for the strength to do that because this is how we're going to begin to get past the influence of those voices to a surpassing victory. I feel like this is one of those things tonight where we can't fix it here and now because it took us all a while to speak enough stuff to ourselves that got us to this corner, you're not going to suddenly be able to leap over all that stuff you've painted in one shebang. Having said that, we can have a let there be light moment, can't we? That starts us and kickstarts us. So I believe this is going to be one of those ones that you've got to walk out. Will you please pay attention to what you are speaking and ask yourself, is what I'm saying here going to produce something in my life that I'm going to want to see and hear, or is what I'm saying in my life going to produce something that, well, that I'm not going to want? Because those words are going to produce. It is inevitable. And we have to make the choice to speak life and to set our course in a new direction. Yes? Okay. God, give us the strength to speak life to us, to each other, um, and help us walk out of the corners where we have spoken ourselves into. Amen. Let's sing. Let's sing. Talk about the inn on the floor that had been painted. Um, it's easy to say, okay, we, we're in a corner, we see it. But then you've got to think about it. Okay, the only way out of this is to literally walk across the painted floor and it's going to create marks and it's going to make a real mess. But that's the only option, isn't it? And sometimes you've got to be willing to say, right, in order to recognise this, I've got to take some action and I might have to walk across my painted floor and I might realise that then I'm going to have to do some work to, to fix the problem. But you've got to come out of that corner um, and so I, I just want there to be a call to action tonight as we sing this song. Um, you know, there's, there's a point where we have to just acknowledge, isn't there? Where we have to say, yes, I'm doing that. This is me. I'm in a corner. I, I keep painting and finding myself there. Well, you know, let's walk across it, even if we get red painted feet at the end of it. And at least uh, admit and acknowledge uh, in order that we can... Uh, go a different direction but if you need to if you know you can come to stand at the front here it's not that at the front here there's any special powers or anything like that it's just an opportunity for you to um, make make a, a, a gesture of intent 
that you have taken this on board and as we sing this, you can be saying yes, louder than the voice, louder than that voice uh, that tells me I'm unworthy. We're going to hear the sound of love that tells a different story and, uh, you know, tonight can be the turning point of your journey. So, okay, we'll sing it and then we're done. Do you want us to go from the beginning or just louder than the voice? Beginning, come on, take it. He's not mad at you.
that you do accept us just as we are. And that grace that we've come to understand is just so incredible. And so, Lord, you know us all. You know us better than we know ourselves. And we know that you are working in us to bring us to that place where we stop hearing those awful voices and awful lies, but all we hear is that wonderful voice of, the, of a loving Father. And you're working that in us and through us. And so, Lord, as the message has gone out tonight, I pray that we will just apply it to our hearts. I pray that uh, each time we, we, we choose to listen to uh, something from the past which is seeking to pull us down, we will find a way of hearing the, the good news of the gospel and who you are as a father to us and that we will walk in that light and that light of your love and we will find that we are transformed by it and our minds are renewed. So Father, just help us as we go out from this place. Help us to continue uh, to, to live out this awesome love, this awesome forgiveness, this awesome newness of life that you've poured upon us and let us be examples to this world we ask it in your name yes yes amen thank you god bless you see you wednesday i dare you come wednesday oh tomorrow morning yeah <laughs> breakfast first thank you thanks for watching you can find out more about all the rock is doing locally and internationally at www.rockofyork.co.uk And why not support the rock from wherever you are? Just hit the donate button now to help us help others.